And I believe that this is the house of the Lord. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. I believe he's willing this morning. Amen. Believe that with all my heart. If you got your Bibles, let's go to 1 Samuel, uh, the 18th chapter. <clears throat> 18th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. <coughs> If you dare say amen. Starting in verse 1. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul. That Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because his soul, uh, because he loved him with, as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even the, to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. Now, we're talking about a time when David just come off the battlefield that Actually, he, 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 pre, he cut the head off of the giant, off the Philistine. And during the time that he was out on the battlefield and King Saul saw what David was doing and how he conducted himself and how that, that he began to be strengthened through the Word of God because we all know the story that the Philistine came at David with the swords and the shields and the armor. But David said, uh, you come at me with all this stuff, but I come at you in the name of the Lord and with the Word of God. And, and, and Saul was observing these things because uh, it, it have to make you pretty sick that uh, your whole entire army is sitting on the sideline and one man goes out and fights for you. But here we are that David, he's already smote uh, Goliath and he's already uh, done everything and he, and he comes back and he gets invited to the king's house. He goes in and, and things, are, uh, you know, uh, I can imagine. Have you ever gone into a place where you really didn't feel like you ought to be at? And it might have been a little bit above what you should have been. You wasn't dressed for the occasion and, 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 and you know what I mean. David goes into the house and, and Saul just, uh, you know, it woos him with love. And, and, and Jonathan, uh, his, uh, the prince, uh, Saul's son, uh, uh, just they, 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 there was something there. God had already prepared and planned for Jonathan and David to have such a friendship because it was going to be needed down the road. Because uh, there was going to have to be a deliverance and a departing. Because uh, 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 later, as we, if we read on, we would understand that, that Saul becomes jealous of David. Because every time they go out and they come back in, uh, 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 the, the ladies of the village and city would say, uh, Well, the, Saul has his thousand, but David has his ten thousands. And that provoked jealousy. But uh, 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 as we see it now, we understand that Jonathan presented himself. Uh, uh, look, uh, he was the prince uh, of the nation. He was the son of the king. Uh, and David comes in uh, with blood on his hands, looking like a mess, uh, walks into the king's palace, probably feeling like, what in the world am I doing here? Like some of us do today. How can I get to this place when I don't feel worthy, when I don't feel like I deserve it, and I don't feel like uh, that I should be doing any of this, and sometimes I don't feel saved, and sometimes I don't feel uh, this or that, just like the, uh, the message in children's church uh, uh, that we've always got something telling us, uh, you don't need that, you don't deserve, that's just crazy, that, you don't want to believe this. Uh, and here David is in the middle of the king's palace, uh, and they're wooing 
suing him. And the, and the prince of the nation uh, literally presents his sword to him, literally surrenders all unto him just because he fought. He fought. He fought hard. Can you imagine? You're standing there and you're all filthy, sweaty, dirty, bloody. Come on, let's reality is go cut something's head off. And what, what happens? It goes everywhere, right? He's standing in the middle going, wow. And all of a sudden, here comes Jonathan. It says, man, because you're doing what you're doing, I just love you, man. And he starts his royal robe. Because we know that if you ever watched uh, on TV, even today, we don't have king uh, uh, position in the United States, but over in England and, and, and those areas, you ever notice those princes and, and they decorate themselves because it's a requirement uh, to let people know who they are. But instead of coming up and saying, do you know who I am? He come up and was like, wow, dude. What you did. What you, what you displayed. Come on, somebody. David's still thinking, man, I'd rather be out there just fighting. There is a time. To let God love you. There is a time just to let God, to let God present himself to you in the way that he wants to. No matter what you think, uh, you, you may have had a bad week, slipped up, fell, and, and, and done all these things this week that you don't count worthy. And God is saying, let me just love you. Let me just love you. If you love me, just show me. But let me love you. Why, why was the love of Jonathan so great towards David? Because uh, he stepped out on the battlefield when the army was backed up. And he fought for what was right. Uh, and, and for what uh, he thought uh, he ought to do. Uh, listen, isn't that the way we ought to be today? Uh, we ought to stand up for what is right. Uh, we ought to stand up for what we know is true. We ought to stand up uh, uh, for uh, our Lord and Savior and then let him present himself to us because that's what he came for. That's what he's here for. Listen, the Bible says uh, in John 15, uh, as the Father hath loved me, so has I loved you. Continue in my love. If you can keep my commandments, uh, you shall abide in my love, even, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Listen at this. Greater love has no man than this, than a man that would lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. See, the, the story is already uh, 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 told about how that one of such royalty would give up everything he had for somebody that would stand up and just uh, fight for what is true. We all know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, uh, but do we know this? Uh, uh, for you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, that th though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor that ye through his poverty might be rich. Do we understand that that when that, that when we are was fighting the hard battles uh, and are fighting the hard battles, uh, uh, Jesus uh, presents Himself to us just as Jonathan did. He's like, I surrender. I became a servant. I gave up my riches and glory that I may become poor and that you may be rich uh, through my poverty. That is a strong word. That is love that no man uh, can understand. That is something that this world can't comprehend or we wouldn't blow each other up and cut each other down and we wouldn't do the things that we do. 
It's beyond comprehension, but it's true and it's available. And, and listen, this morning, uh, you may have been uh, through the week uh, uh, that is just straight from the pits of Hades. Uh, uh, but let me tell you something. The Lord is here to present himself to you in a loving manner. He is here to caress you, love you, and, and to say, uh, uh, look, uh, it doesn't matter uh, what uh, uh, people are saying. It doesn't matter how hard the battle gets. Uh, I just want you to know that I have presented myself to you I am available for you listen I, I know uh, that sometimes we get in those weeks uh, and days uh, and circumstances uh, and situations uh, that uh, it just seems to overwhelm us uh, I'm not going to preach to you uh, that uh, that you're going to be able to withstand and 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 and, uh, and come victorious through every battle uh, because uh, I believe in this uh, that uh, through uh, our temptations and through all these other things out there situations when a lot of times when we get discouraged and we fall, that's when we learn. Because why, why did Paul, what did Jesus tell Paul when he paid, prayed about the, the thorn in the flesh? He said, Paul, my grace is sufficient. If I can get you out of the way, you're going to see my strength. If we would stop being so strong and going, yeah, I, I've got to be. There's a lot walking around today going, I've got to be the Christian. I've got to do the right thing. I've got to, I'm going to do this and do that. But they forget one thing, how to follow God. Let me ask you. Maybe you haven't had a bad week. Maybe you haven't uh, had that type of week. Uh, and maybe everything's been great and the Word of God's just jumped out of the pages onto you and you got it. Uh, but let me ask you this. Are you presenting yourself to be loved this morning? Did you come to be loved? Did you come to be, uh, 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 listen, uh, just to be encouraged? Did you come to, uh, to find the joy of uh, the Word said uh, that my joy might remain in you? Uh, that we should be happy. Uh, we should be uh, uh, delighted uh, to be a child of the Most High God. Uh, uh, that we should be uh, uh, on fire for the Lord. Why? Because uh, of what He's done for us. It doesn't matter what He's going to do for me. I know what the promise is. I'm still trying to uh, elaborate uh, and, to, uh, and to pay uh, and respect and uh, honor and glory to one thing that he done for me. Forgive him. Maybe you're here and you're in a condition where you're not that bad of a person. Maybe you're here thinking, well, I haven't done that bad. I don't, I don't do all these things that I hear everybody else do. And I, I haven't uh, uh, done this or that. Or, or, or maybe you're here and just uh, 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 never uh, uh, that you can uh, uh, account for. Uh, surrendered yourself to the Lord and give Him your heart, uh, soul, and mind. But yet you're still thinking, I'm not a bad person. I'm not, uh, I, I'm not that bad. I've been raised well. And that may be the truth but the Bible tells me except a man come through him except a man come through Jesus he cannot be saved he cannot he cannot be the child that he needs to be you cannot inherit the kingdom of God listen I, I, I'm so thankful for what Jesus did for me and, and uh, the Bible says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead in sin should live unto a righteousness by his, whose stripes ye are healed that's what the word says who by his, he took upon himself to become my sins. To me, that is a, a, a that is a representation of Jonathan that I just gave you. He surrendered his royalty. He surrendered his, his right to be above anybody else. Jonathan's like, oh man, there is no way I can do that. So here you go. Jesus surrendered himself for us. 
He surrendered himself for our sins. That we may live a righteous life. That we may, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, strive uh, uh, for that perfection. Uh, uh, that we may uh, uh, try to be uh, in the same mind frame as Him. How many la- uh, 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 folks lately have you presented yourself to and laid down pride? Laid down uh, uh, everything uh, uh, that may be uh, uh, holding you back uh, or that you have so much joy in to see one soul saved. Have we done that lately? See, it's easy for us to keep saying, oh, we're going to pray on me and we're going to pray on me. But the Bible says compel them. And you can't compel nobody until you go face to face. Even here this morning... God wants every soul to be saved. But in order for him to compel people to come uh, and and repent of their sins, uh, it takes one thing, the Spirit. And without the Spirit, we'd have nothing. So uh, this morning I know uh, that maybe uh, there is more than just one that's going through a struggle, a battle. Maybe one that's more than one standing in the valley of decision. But I'm telling you that the Lord is presenting himself to you in a mighty way. He's coming through love. He's coming through worship. He's coming through his word to tell you that look, he, he, he sees what you're doing. He knows every intent. He knows every hair that is on your head. But yet, there is some things that must be done. You must surrender unto him and give him all. The Bible teaches that that it's not the Father's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. All. All. It doesn't matter if it's the highest government officials in Washington. If they're not saved in that day that the Lord decides to return and, and take the children of his uh, uh, belonging, his bride, then listen, it doesn't matter how much money they have in the bank or how much of a, of a, of a government title they have on the end of their name. Listen, without Jesus, it's nothing. Same to say in your circumstance this morning. If you are here and you're going through some stuff that uh, uh, that you can't control, you can't can handle, you can't manipulate. Listen, go through it with Jesus. Sometimes we have to stop and stand still, and that's hard for me sometimes because I'm not a stand still kind of person, as you can tell. I can't stand still and, and, and sometimes see the salvation of the Lord. Why? Because I want to put myself in there. I want to push stuff through. I want to get her done. God, I'm going to do this. Will you honor it? Thank you. I'll do it anyway. And then I end up in a mess. Wondering what, what has gone wrong. I've had a bad week. No, you are the cause of the week. Your week's hating you right now. Why? Because uh, you think too much. You put too much emphasis on I. You, you think that we have to uh, 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 keep going and going and going. Sometimes it's okay. Listen, uh, at, the, at the Red Sea, there it was raging and there was Pharaoh coming. And sometimes it's okay just to be caught up in a moment to say, Jesus, Jesus, sometimes it's all right to not know. There's only one thing the Bible teaches me that I must know at all times, my salvation. There's going to be times when you get that. I was going to say Cody, but I want uh, that devil on the right side. <laughs> like, woo, don't go there. And you get that angel on the other and you're torn. 
Maybe it's one of those gray areas where the Bible doesn't specifically say, don't do that. Or maybe it's an area where it doesn't, it doesn't mention, but you have to read between the lines. So therefore, if you don't know what between the lines is, and you don't go there to study to show thyself approved, then you don't have to follow that guidelines, right? Yeah. Good luck with that. But if it doesn't say... See, the Bible is not written just like the Ten Commandments are, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. We, we know those. It goes beyond that. How are you going to know what it says if you don't study? And if you don't count, know what it says, how are you going to know without asking? So it's a, it's a two-fold process. You've got to study and you've got to pray. But in the meantime, how do you stand in the situation that you're in? How do you, how do you get through? You better understand the character of Jesus. Compassionate but power. Loving but kind. He didn't grab somebody by the throat. Slap them, even though sometimes, come on y'all. Come on now. Tell me you ain't got somebody you'd like to just really shake some Jesus into. Amen. Huh? Amen. Come on. Don't you, I don't understand you. Why? Because, uh, uh, th listen, he said we could overcome it. He didn't, he didn't take away the sin. He didn't take away the temptations. It's still there. But he gave us power. He gave us power to become uh, the sons of God. He gave us power to say no. He gave us power to learn and understand. He gave us power and knowledge uh, that comes with uh, being the Christian that we ought to be. Uh, it's more than a prayer. It's more than a tendency. It's uh, on a Sunday morning. It's more uh, than just uh, going, yes, I go down to First General Baptist Church uh, every Sunday. I'm faithful to that place. It doesn't matter if you're faithful to these four walls. Uh, what are you in your heart? Uh, do you Can you uh, bring somebody to the knowledge of Christ? Uh, do you understand how to get somebody to fight and battle for their situation? Or do you say, if you don't pray, I don't know what to tell you. It's more than saying, pray, pray, pray. Bring them to the Word. Listen, if, if in the beginning the Word was God and Word became God, listen, then shouldn't we bring them to the Word? Shouldn't we speak? Listen, Jesus, if He was, the, the Bible tells us that He became, uh, the Word became flesh. That was through Christ. Well, uh, listen, don't know about you, but that Word tells me He ascended. The Word didn't leave. Why? It went back to paper. It's still as strong today as it is with Jesus walking every step, speaking every word. That word, I can deliver you out of the clutches of Satan. That word can get you through sicknesses. Why? Because it tells me by his stripes we are healed. Listen, that word can get us to the point of salvation. Why? Because confession with the mouth is unto salvation. We work hard trying to pay our bills and trying to lay up a little treasure for uh, uh, someday, hoping for retirement. I'm worried about that part. I, I look around, look at the age group in here. You want retirement someday so you can stretch out on the couch, get up at 7.30, have a cup of coffee, lay back down at 8.30. Well, we're going to have to pray hard, Brother Brian. Because you know who's taking our retirement? You know who's taking everything that we can possibly lay up? Listen, it's taken a lot. There's a lot of changes coming. That day may not approach. Are we ready? Are we ready? 
Listen, what, what lies for tomorrow? I'm not going to stand here and try to tell you what's going to happen because I don't know. And be honest with you, I'm glad I don't know. Even though I am better at being proactive than reacting. I'm better at seeing things and planning than I am than it hits me in the face. But you know what? With God, all things are possible. And it doesn't matter. If I don't have to proact. I can react in the name of Jesus. Listen, don't know what, you, what troubles you. Don't know is what's going in your mind. Uh, but uh, the Bible says uh, in 1 John 1 and 9, says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, uh, uh, unto all righteousness or cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's Jesus presenting himself, saying, look, this is what I was, but I'm, I'm going to let you become me, and I'm going to take what you are in order for you to get recover. I'm, I'm going to become that sin. I'm going to become uh, that uh, mistrust. I'm going to become uh, that whatever it is uh, uh, that uh, is, is overcoming you. I'm going to become that. Uh, and I'm going to let you have my royalty. I'm going to let you uh, take uh, my joy. I'm going to let you uh, be the one that prospers. Uh, I know uh, that a lot of people out there believe that uh, uh, to be a Christian uh, and to be uh, a believer of God that you've got to have nothing. Uh, that is so untrue. So not true. I believe we can prosper in the will of God. Jonathan said, man, I don't know who you are, but I admire what you just did for me. He presented himself to David. Listen, all you must do is present yourself a living, what? Holy and acceptable. Unto God, which is, oh, you're hard to do, can't, can't accomplish it, service. Which is your reasonable service. What's that mean? That means I can do. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. But if we keep going on the track that we're on, thinking we're okay, thinking we're all right, thinking we're just having a bad moment, thinking, listen, whatever you may think. I don't know about you, but in those days when that I have been, I felt like defeated, when I have been stripped of my victory of what the cross represents to all mankind, listen, that's when I find myself on my face repenting unto God, unto whatever it was that I idea to get there or listen you don't have to do anything to get into the the temptation and the trials of life you don't have to do a thing it's just there but the thing is the enemy is there to destroy so he wants you to think that you're not worthy of God that whatever you've just done, whatever you've done in your past, uh, whatever you're thinking, whatever is, is on your mind, uh, that, oh, you, you can't never serve God because of that. Oh, yeah? If the Spirit is trying you this morning, I, I, I reach out to you with the Word of God. I'm telling you that the Word of God tells you you can be saved. You can, you can be victorious. You can get through the troubles, trials, tribulations, uh, 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 temptations. Uh, uh, you, can get, you can be victorious through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. You can accomplish all that is there. Listen, there is nothing impossible. Nothing. There's a lot of people that want to serve God just to think that, well, it's going to make my journey just easier, and that's all I want. But that ain't a way to serve God. Serving God comes uh, uh, with sacrifice. Serving God comes with hard decisions. 
Serving God comes with telling our friends about what they're doing and why it's wrong. Serving God comes with ministering to a stranger when we don't know who they are, where they've been, or what they're up to. It's putting our heart out there going, God, I'm trusting you in all things. But what about you this morning? Are you serving that same God? Are you acknowledging that there was royalty presented to you? And it's available today. It's available right now. It's available in this moment. It's available in this time. Because why? Because Jesus came to give life. He said, uh, whom the Son of God set free is free indeed. The world is going to portray that all, all you have to do is be a good person. All you've got to do is, is find love. Friend, let me tell you something this morning. The world is heading in the wrong direction. Our nation is heading in the wrong direction. The absolute 180 from God. Why? Because uh, we're, uh, the, it, our, our statues are not matching up to God's values. It's okay just to pray to your God. That's what our, uh, the, the rest of the world says. Pray to your God. Well, I know how to pray to my God. But there's some gods out there that I worry about people praying to them. If it's made on an oak pole, chances are it ain't going to deliver you. If it's made out of gold, chances are unless you hit rock bottom and the gold prices are good, it ain't going to help you at all. But I know a God. I know a man. Who has so much compassion. Who has so much understanding. Who has so much love. That he gave up his riches. And you know I wanted to do one of those PowerPoint things. Presentations. But have you ever tried to Google images of heaven? They can't be captured. Everything's ugly. I'm like ugh. That ain't it. I sat for an hour flipping through photos yesterday going, really? That's all you got? I'm like, wait a minute, Mr. Brainy. How are you going to portray heaven? Hmm. But it came to one thing. Blessed are those who cannot see but believe. God doesn't want us to see heaven. Not with these eyes. I can see it in my heart. And I can feel it in my soul. And that's all I need, brother Aaron. I don't need that salesperson coming down from heaven going, Okay, Gary, here's, you got your choice. You want this matching? This matching. You want green? Blue. You want gold? Silver. I don't need that kind of stuff. I got those complicated deals down here. God's like, I know what you need. And he's got it prepared for me. He said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. I don't need your descriptions. I don't need, I don't need to know what, what color carpet you want. I don't need to know if you need marble inlaid or, or granite tops. I don't need to know none of that. Because you know why? None of that's going to be worthy of the kingdom of heaven. None of it. Our precious, precious, most precious stuff down here that we, everybody's interested in, the gold. And we're going to walk on it? That's good. That's good. What's the cheapest thing you got? You're walking on it. Praise God. So if that's the cheapest, can you imagine? We haven't even mined, you know what I mean, right? The, 
the things that are going to be inlaid in heaven. We, we can't comprehend that. But I can tell you one thing. Jesus wasn't interested in giving us jewels and precious stones. He said, my joy, I'll give to you. My joy. Sometimes when I get depressed and sometimes when I get frustrated, I go buy something and that helps me out sometimes. Man, I'm glad I don't get that way often. I, but you can splurge a little bit and you're like, ah. It'll take your mind off of what was, even though it's going to come back. But this, I, I can't. I can't explain. I've never regretted. I've never, never said, good day. I'm done since the day I met Jesus. He's always been new and fresh. He's always been a friend. He's always been closer than a brother. And he always listens. Even if you came and tried to spill your guts out to me and, and things are going on, I'm going to be attentive to something else and probably not going to pay a, all attention, but I can tell you one who will, who will understand everything. Who will, who will understand everything. Why don't you stand with me this morning? Say, come get